Hey guys, CityWalk City Wall here in partnership with Paradox Interactive and the City Skylines official YouTube channel. And I'm here to bring you part three of a four part tutorial series on asset creation for City Skylines. So if you missed the first two, I might recommend going back and catching up real quick. In this tutorial, we're gonna take these pieces of the building that we've modeled, finish UV unwrapping them and texture them so that they don't look like grayish shapes. So I'm gonna go into the UV editing mode here in Blender and take this main wall chunk and the roof chunk because I know they're gonna be the biggest, largest, most important textures and lay them out here in my actual UV map. Now what I can do is apply our Photoshop file to these pieces. So at the bottom right, I'm gonna go into the Material Properties button, add a new material, set the base color of that material to be an image, open our Photoshop file as that image, and then at the top right, make sure we have viewport shading turned on and we can now see that our models are being wrapped with that Photoshop file that we created in the first tutorial. You can import any type of photo here, but it's nice that Blender takes PSD files so that you can quickly save in Photoshop and open it here without having to export it out to a PNG like you would with GIMP. And just from a quick glance here, we can see some of these surfaces are unwrapped upside down. So I can just flip them around over in the UV editing side of the screen by using R. And I wanna bring these UV lines, this sort of guide here into our photo editing program so that I know how to line things up there. And I can do that by exporting the UV out as a PNG. So I'll make sure I have everything selected and then go up to the top and go to UV, export UV layout. This will make a PNG photo that I can then bring into our photo editing program and use as sort of guidelines for arranging our textures. And then at the end, we'll turn it off so we don't see it. So now we have to figure out what's actually going to go on these surfaces. There's a number of ways to do this, but I like to use what's called PBR textures, which are like 3D modeling textures and they look very realistic because they come with bump maps and all this sort of extra stuff that 3D programs and games can use to render textures better. Plus they're seamless, so they can be repeated over and over. There's a number of great resources online to find free PBR textures, including textures.com, which is my favorite uh, that I've found because it's free as long as you make an account. So I found this metal texture here, which I think would work well as the base. And so I'm gonna download here the albedo texture, which is another name for diffuse, the normal texture and the roughness texture. And roughness is technically the inverse of specular. So this isn't exactly what we need, but we can quickly turn it into a specular texture by inverting the colors in our photo editing program. So I'll drag these three into the project and make sure that I have all three selected, shrink them down until the scale of the texture makes sense in comparison to the scale of the surfaces I have here. And then I'll just copy and paste these textures a few times. And you can see we're making a lot of layers here because we're copying three textures each time. So before I go too crazy here, I'm gonna merge the textures of the same type together. So if I select all the normal textures, right click, hit merge layers, and then the same with the others. So I'll just copy and paste these textures again, cover up the whole image, merge all the similar kinds, and this will be our base texture for the model that we can then add details on top of. So let's rename these layers something memorable and place them in their correct folders. Again, the diffuse is the texture that determines the actual color of the object. Specular determines the shininess where white is completely reflective like glass or window and black is matte like dirt or denim. And then normal is usually best left computer generated. Uh, that's the bump map. For this diffuse, I actually want it to be sort of a dark green color. So I'll take a moment here messing with the hue and the curves to get this to a place I want. Then to get the specular correct, I'll turn off the diffuse so we can actually see it. And we know this is a roughness texture, which means we need to use the invert effect on it. So I'll make an invert adjustment layer in this specular folder. And this specular is way too bright for City Skyline. Specular textures work best in the game when they're much, much darker than this especially when uh, they're gonna be facing upwards towards the sky. So we'll just turn this way down with curves. Next, this top and bottom part of the wall, I wanna be a bit darker. So I'll duplicate the base diffuse texture, make it darker, then select the areas I actually want to be darker and create a mask. I also want there to be some details on this, maybe some vents. So I'll bring in a new texture, another one from textures.com and isolate just this part uh, at the top that I want. As I'm arranging it, I'm making sure that whatever scale and position changes I make to the diffuse, I'm also making to the specular and normal. They all have to stay exactly on top of each other or they won't display properly. I'll rename the layers, place them in their correct folder, and then just spend a second matching the diffuse texture's color a bit, give it a bit more contrast, and the specular texture's brightness make it a bit less shiny. So let's see how this looks so far in Blender. 
So if we reload the texture by opening up the image again, and then at the top right, uh, hit the viewport shading button, our texture will show up on the 3D model. Now, Blender is really only showing us the diffuse, so the real test comes when we actually import it in game and we can see the bumps and the shininess, but this gives us a good idea of what we're doing and if we're moving in the right direction. And this is looking good, but this wall is a little plain. So exact same process as I did with the vent. I'm gonna add some little details, little holes in the metal paneling. And then I'm also gonna download a wall stain decal from textures.com, overlay that and give this wall a bit more realism. So let's move on to some of these other pieces of the model, the stairs maybe. If we select the bits of the stairs here in Blender, we can see which parts of the UV they correspond to. I'm just gonna take all these tall skinny bits, the railing, the pieces that are holding up the stairs and the door frame and move them all next to the wall in the UV layout, leaving just a bit of space between all of them. And then I'll just export the UV layout again and re-import that into our photo editing program and delete the old one. The railing, I wanna be a brushed nickel sort of texture. So I'll bring in another PBR texture, set of three PNGs, arrange them over this one little bit of UV and delete the excess. In Photoshop, it's really annoying though. You have to rasterize the layers to do that first. And then for this piece that's holding up the stairs, I'll bring in another set of textures, but this one needs to be rotated. And rotating normal maps can sometimes cause them to become inverted. So you can see if I rotate it one way, the bumps look like they're concave. And if I rotate it the other way, they stay convex. So just something to be aware of. You don't want your divots looking like bumps. For this next bit here, this is the rim of the door, and I want it to look like a hazard strip. And in general, all these textures I'm bringing in, in order for them to look good in city skylines, the diffuse and the specular need to be pretty dark, darker than you might expect. You don't want your asset blindingly bright or shiny. It might look weird and dark here in Photoshop, but once you bring it into cities, it'll pop out a lot more. So back in Blender, we can see how this looks. Some of these dots aren't quite lined up here, so we can just select these faces and on the UV editing side, move uh, around their UV layout and get them just right, super easy. So next, let's do the actual stair. For this, I want it to be like a metal sheet with holes in it. And to do that, we're gonna need to use all the same textures as before, but also uh, an alpha texture. And the way alpha textures work, you should really only use pure black pixels, meaning uh, transparent areas and pure white pixels. Uh, meaning uh, not transparent areas, unless you're dealing with rotor shaders, which is a way to make glass or semi-transparent surfaces, but that's a whole other process. I'm not gonna get into that. For this texture, I'm gonna bring in some metal diffuse and specular and this kind of grill looking normal and alpha textures that I downloaded separately. And that's the cool thing. You can kind of combine different textures to make some interesting effects. So I'm gonna give this brush nickel texture a bump map that it wouldn't normally have, lining them up all together, renaming and putting them in their correct folder. And then in the alpha texture folder, I'm gonna create a white background so that these black dots are the only thing that's gonna be transparent on the whole entire model. So skipping ahead here just a bit, I've gotten most of this door and door frame done, adding a lot of little details, dots and signs and things. And one cool thing, now that I've gotten a good chunk of this texture done, we can start reusing bits of it. So rather than making a new texture for this last little surface here inside the door handle, I'm gonna move this piece of the UV somewhere else, find a cool texture for it, something that I've already made. Last thing for the door is this little window and I want it to light up at night, which means I'm gonna be using the illumination texture. So I'm just gonna put both of these windows on top of each other in the UV map so that we can do them together. Uh, they can be really, really small since there's no detail at all to a window. It's perfectly smooth, it's all the same color. So I'll make five new layers in Photoshop, name them one for each uh, texture. The diffuse will be a dark gray, maybe slightly bluish since it might be reflecting skylight a little bit. Specular, I wanna make 100% white, which tells the game specifically to treat this as a window. The normal, I'll use the eyedropper tool to just take the regular shade of blue here, make the whole thing flat, no bumps at all. And for the illumination texture, props and vehicles have their own rules for how illumination textures work. It's all spelled out on Ronix 69s website, cslmodding.info, but for buildings, this is basically how it works. First, we need to make an illumination background, which is the 192 shade of gray for the whole image. And this shade signifies that nothing is illuminated. And you can create this color by just typing in 192 three times for R, G, and B. And then for the window illumination part, uh, we'll just make that white. And that means maximum illumination for the windows at night. In other scenarios, it might be slightly more complicated than this. And it changes how you're meant to do this from type to type of different assets. So if you want your asset to glow, I'd always recommend going and checking Ronix69's website to make sure you're doing the illumination correctly for what you're working on. 
So then I'm gonna place these layers into their folders. And the thing to note here is we want the specular to actually be white. So it needs to stay above that invert uh, adjustment layer that we made at the very beginning. Another issue you might come across, you can see here as I'm working my way through this texture, I'm trying to flip this vent piece upside down, but that reverses the direction of the normal map. You can see the bumps are aimed towards us on the top here and the pink has flipped sides. That's not correct. We want it all to look the same. So what I can do is making sure that only the normal is selected, go into the channels window and then apply the invert effect to only the green channel. And then when you go back, it should look correct. Another issue you might come across is if you want to use a texture that doesn't come with a normal. Luckily, you can make your own in Photoshop. So here I have this little control panel. It's just a regular photo I found online. I cut it out, I recolored it, blended it in, kind of like makeshift diffuse texture. So to get a normal for this, what I'm gonna do is duplicate this layer and create a little bit of a fake background around it. One that I can later erase, but it's a similar color to what is supposed to be there. And then uh, I can take this whole thing, go to Filter, 3D, Generate Normal Map, and there I'll mess around with the settings until I get something that looks like the rest of the normal map. The bumps are facing in the correct direction, we got a similar amount of blur, so I'll hit OK, move this into the Normal Map folder, and then just erase some of these janky edges around the sides of that fake background so that it blends in. And you can see it's a little iffy compared to the other parts of the normal map, but it might be passable in game. It's really small, so we'll see. And this process of making a custom part of a texture, you can totally do for any of the other textures as well. So for specular or illumination or color or alpha, it's super easy. You're just gonna be using the paintbrush to paint different shades of white or black or gray for whatever you need. So skipping way ahead here, I'm almost done putting all these bits of texture together but I still have this empty color folder. And I personally don't really like using the color texture because it makes it so that you can't recolor the entire asset using the procedural objects mod or the painter mod or anything like that. And it's actually uh, completely fine to ignore the color texture or any texture for that matter, other than the diffuse. Uh, you can just not import them and it's totally fine. But if you did want to use a color texture, basically you can color in certain areas white on a black background and only those white areas will change color when you try to recolor them. Or when you place down a bunch of the same thing, just that part of the texture will randomly change colors. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna create a white image and that will be my color texture. You can also see there's some areas of the UV that I didn't use. They're empty, which isn't really ideal. If you wanna optimize your asset as best as possible, you'd wanna fill it in entirely. But for something like this that's modular that I may end up adding more pieces to later on down the road, it might be good to leave some extra space uh, in the texture just in case I might need it later for a new part. But anyways, that's the basics of texturing and we're at the end of part three of our four part tutorial series. We've covered the two biggest steps, modeling and texturing, and in the last episode, we'll bring it all together, see how it looks in game, and finally publish the asset on the workshop. I hope you guys are enjoying this mini tutorial series. I hope you're finding it useful and I really hope to see tons of new assets on the workshop from tons and tons of new asset creators. That's it from me, City Walk City Wall, and make sure to subscribe to the City Skylines YouTube channel to catch the last tutorial in this series.